Welcome back to Vancouver Carpenter. Today I'm going to try and show you every single mistake that I can think of that a beginner could make while hanging drywall. So unfortunately we don't have any ceilings to hang on this job, but there is enough boards here that I can show you guys just some of the basic mistakes you could make and some of the things that you want to think of before you start hanging your boards and while you're hanging your boards. Okay, as far as kit, what tools might you want? So a drywall drill is really handy to have. Um, you could get away with an impact driver and maybe, you know, one of those little dimplers. Like some people have good results with them. Some people fail horribly with them. You can try it. There are some higher end dimplers too. But in my opinion, if you have any decent amount of board to hang, buying one of these for like a hundred bucks or less, not a Hilti cordless, but a corded one for like a hundred bucks or less and then like selling it for half price on Craigslist after, like that's well worth your time and energy if you see how much easier it makes the job. Okay, so next you wanna have a knife. Uh, most drywallers you will find use a fixed blade knife. So that's one of those sort of basic utility knives. And the reason is the blade is a little stiffer. So you can get the job done with other knives. I don't really like these big ones. I don't like how thick the blade is. I find it's not as nice for cutting drywall. And I don't like the smaller Olfa knives very much because that blade's kind of flimsy. So I prefer a fixed blade knife. Obviously you're gonna need a pencil, tape measure. Fat Max is fine for me or one of the homeowner special tape measures is just fine and dandy too. Circle cutter is really handy to have. The cheese grater, drywall rasp, definitely worth having. Chalk line, you definitely want a chalk line and make sure you use blue chalk in the chalk line. That would definitely be a beginner mistake to use some other kind of chalk in your chalk line. So like red or black, those are staining and it could come through your water-based primer. So don't use those, use a blue chalk and um, the Irwin chalk, kind of sucks. I mean, at least it did 10 years ago and I haven't bought it since then because it always failed me. But there's other brands uh, like the Stanley Blue Chalk is good or Tajima Chalk is always amazing. But yeah, don't buy the Irwin Chalk. It just doesn't stick to anything. Okay, so next, uh, one of the first beginner mistakes that somebody could make is like what kind of screws you're using. So in this job, it's wood framing and we are gonna be using inch and a quarter coarse thread screws. So that's really important that you use coarse thread screws for wood and fine thread screws for steel. The next is going to be the length of the screw. That's another common mistake that people make. So for just half inch drywall, inch and a quarter is fine. And inch and a quarter is also fine on steel stud with fine thread because the threads don't have to go in very far since they're just basically grabbing something, you know, twice the thickness of a pop can. So they don't need to go in very far. But as a general rule of thumb, for wood framing, I would say you should be going about three quarters of an inch into the framing member uh, minimum. So that's why inch and a quarter for half inch, you've got one and five eighths for five eighths, and then you got two inch for double layer applications. And drywall screws have a big range. They go, you know, like every quarter inch. So more than a lot of your typical wood framing screws. Anyways, that's enough about screws. That's probably super boring. Um, it's time for us to get to hanging some drywall so I can think of some more mistakes that people would typically make. Okay, so let's start out with this one right here. This is gonna be a vertical sheet because it's gonna make the most sense being eight by four roughly. Got a plug down there and one in the middle that's kind of hard to see. All right, you guys, now we're gonna get to one of my favorite mistakes and one of the ones that I think people make the most. And carpenters make this mistake all the time too. And they do it because they're used to trying to get a tight fit on things. So one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they try to cut it too tight. So on this one right here, let's see what our measurements are. So I'm gonna measure at the top right here for width. So it's 47 and a half to that brick, but we don't need to go to the brick. I'm gonna be putting a trim on here. So I'm actually gonna to go to 47. So I have enough, let's see, 47 and a half. No, 47 and an eighth. I'm gonna write it down right here, 47 and an eighth. Check your middle measurement. And what do we have right there? Yeah, 47 and an eighth will be good. It'll give a little space for that trim. Good there too. Let's check it down at the floor. 
So down here, all of a sudden, we are down to 46 and three quarters. So all of a sudden, it goes in a bunch. So it's a good thing we checked. 47, 46 and three quarters. So we're gonna taper this piece to 46 and three quarters. So it's gonna go from 47 and an eight to 46 and three quarters. And the height, we can leave it pretty loose. So I'm gonna give it an easy half inch. So 91 and a half there. Check it here. Don't let my tape hit that plug. 91 and a half will be plenty of space. And how about back here? 91 and a half is plenty of space. So our height, 91 and a half. Okay, one of the next biggest mistakes that people make is they don't set everything up in a nice out of the way spot. So you gotta plan ahead and get your sheets preferably all leaned up against one wall if you can or one wall of the room that you can easily board last that's out of the way. And then get them all white side out, all nice and tidy because that's gonna make it easier to do things like slide cutting, and it's gonna make it easier for you to like look at the wall you're gonna hang and then you know get a point of reference for putting all your measurements on, which is what I had to do on this one. So what I did was I checked which wall was out of plumb the most and it was the right hand wall. So that's the one we're gonna taper. So we have one mark here that I think was like 47 and an eighth and then we got 46 and three quarters down there. We got 91 and a half, which we're gonna cut off the top. So this is where having that chalk line comes in real handy. Hopefully it actually has some chalk in it. <laughs> the corner of the sheet was too blown out to actually pull a chalk line from. Hopefully this one does a little better. Nope. You guys, I can't even pull from these. Take a look at this. This is too blown out for me to even put a chalk line onto. So what are we gonna do about that? Well, we could just cut this side first. Let's make sure we actually mark that. So 47 and an eight. Ah, keeping a fresh blade handy. So make sure your knives are sharp. I change these maybe like two or three times a day, easy. I'd rather go through the blades and have a nice sharp, um, nice sharp blade. So here's another one. Don't push so hard and do not have your hand anywhere like this. So that way as you're cutting down, you're not gonna cut your hand. All this needs is a little score. So I'm not even pushing very hard. I've been holding it at the bottom with my foot like this. And now I can just cut back up. So at this point, it just needed the little score. Snap super easy. And I usually cut it again from the front. But I, again, I'm careful not to like go slashing wildly. If you wanna pull the sheet out, get behind it and cut it from the back, it is actually easier, but usually I'm too impatient to actually move the sheet out and do that. So that's why if you have a nice sharp blade, and this is where you gotta be careful coming up to your hand, you know, that you're not going wildly out of control. So pushing too hard and trying to cut as much into or through the drywall as they can on the first cut is one of the biggest mistakes newbies make too. All you need to do is cut the paper and that thing's gonna break right off. I lost my mark here, so we'll start again. It was 47 and an eight. So again, all it needs is just a little snap and I'm stabilizing my knife with my hand on the board like this. If you're going like this, it's gonna wobble, but if your hand is on the board, it helps stabilize it. So again, just a quick little score. Okay, really quickly, we're gonna introduce a little terminology. So this is the factory edge of the sheet, and this is what's known as a bevel. So yeah, you can see a little bit of light that shines through there. So the sheet tapers off right here. I'm not sure if you guys can see that on camera, but that is for hiding the tape when you butt these two edges together. So in the bevel of the board, the mud has been, not mud, but the, uh, the gypsum inside the board has been compressed. So it's harder and it's a little bit harder to snap and it often doesn't break as nicely. I should still be able to get it with a simple score. So it snapped no problem, but it often doesn't break as cleanly. And in this case, I'll usually cut from the back right here.
Okay, this is where the old cheese grater comes in handy, especially on a bevel where it doesn't break super clean. So if you want to clean up your line, that's what these are for. Okay, you guys, so getting these measured is actually the easy part. And if I didn't mention it, one of the main things people do is they cut them too tight. So this one wasn't the best example for that because it has an edge here that we're gonna put a trim on against the brick. But generally I go, you know, I would say an eighth to sometimes a quarter inch, especially if it has both sides that are butting up to bare drywall. I'll go an eighth to a quarter inch so that it just slides in there nicely instead of me fighting those edges and having all the corners blow out. So definitely blown out corners, like that's a carpenter special for sure. Another mistake that people make is they don't use the same point of reference. So I'm gonna be measuring off the same two points for this whole thing. So I'm not gonna be measuring off the brick because that's not where it's butting up against. It's gonna be butting up against this wall right here and it's gonna be butting up against this ceiling. So those are gonna be the only two reference points that I use the whole time. So a lot of the time people will be measuring, they'll be measuring off the floor, they'll measure off both sides, they'll measure off the ceiling. And when you do that, you get measurements from different spaces so all of your lines don't line up. So your openings and everything, it just ends up all kind of screwy. So pick two spots. And the two spots I pick are the ones that are gonna be butted up against. So right here, I'm picking a spot on this box that's relatively free of wires. So right at about 43 and three quarters is a pretty good spot for me to do. 43 and three quarters. And measuring down from the ceiling, well, let's say about 43 again. So we're gonna go right into this little bottom pocket where there's no wires. So I'll put an arrow usually and 43. That way I know where I'm gonna be measuring from. These ones down here when people have left the plugs in are super annoying. So it's not an easy box to router out. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna measure from here to the center. So 43, 43 and an eighth roughly. And we're not going to measure off the floor. Remember I told you that? Because I cut this half an inch short. If I measure off the floor, my mark's gonna be off by half an inch. So I've got to go all the way to the ceiling. It's super annoying, but it's just what I have to do. And that one is about seven and a half feet down. Not <laughs> seven and a half feet, seven feet and a half inch. So 84 and a half. So now I can transfer those over. So what do we have? 43 and an eighth from this side, right about here. 43 and one eighth. Eighty-four and a half down. So this one, this one we have to router right here and now. So I'm just gonna be routering this big enough to pull the plug through, but small enough that I don't overcut it. Okay, and this top one's simple. It just needs a little mark. So we got 43 and three quarters and it's gonna be roughly this high. 43 and three quarters. And it was simple, 43 down. Right there. So now if we remember, it was in the bottom right hand corner. So it was roughly like this. Sometimes you can draw that if it helps you. But what I know is I need to go this way with my router. And then as I router, we're gonna be going to the edge, we're gonna hop over and go around counterclockwise. But we're not there yet. The next thing you wanna do, and this is totally a beginner mistake, is not marking out your joists and studs. So if you are doing a ceiling, what you're gonna to wanna to do is everywhere on that top plate, if there's like a joist coming right there, well, Put a little mark right there, center, 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 every time you have one. And then that way, once you get that sheet up, you're gonna be able to find them again. So in this case, I better scribble that out. But in this case, well, we know there's one along the brick. We don't need to mark that. But this one right here, we're gonna mark right there. That's our center. Same thing on the floor. 
right there. It's almost impossible to see because there is a line right there. So we'll give it a little C right there. All right, next we've got to hang the board. And man, I wish I had enough space in here to show you guys the whole wall, but it's a tight spot and my camera is not a very good wide angle. Well, it's not a wide angle, which is why it isn't a good one. So I also might mention that um, we are gonna be routering these boxes because it's easier for me, it's more professional. But if you weren't routering the boxes, what I would say is you're gonna have to mark the edges of each one of these outlets. And what I would say is err on the side of marking them a little bit smaller because it's way easier to cut a little bit out of these once it's installed than it is to, um, well, then you have to fill and patch and tape the edges of them when you've overcut it and your electrical cover plate doesn't cover it. So that's another beginner mistake is people tend to overcut those thinking that it's not a big deal. But if you undercut it slightly, like I said, way easier to cut that out while you're hanging than it is to, yeah, I already said it. You don't need me to say it again. Let's hang this thing. So what are we gonna do here? Well, let's get it over here, tied up to the wall. Now, there's another tool that I don't think I mentioned and that is a panel lift. So what this thing's for obviously is lifting a panel, hence panel lift. Okay, so I'm gonna lift this thing up and it looks pretty flush along the ceiling. This wall's looking good, so we picked the right one to cut the excess off and taper it. So, another beginner mistake is going to be fastening too close to the boxes that you have to router. So I'm just gonna put one right here. I'm gonna put one right here. I'm gonna put one right here. Those three are now gonna hold it. This side's not even sagging. So if I really want, I am gonna put one up in this top corner just to make sure it can't go anywhere. But now we can router out these boxes. First one of the day was definitely a little clumsy. I forgot that it had both of those right there but nothing here is not gonna cover. Okay, next we have this one, and this is live, and I'm not gonna recommend that people work with live plugs, but this is just what I have to work with here. So I mentioned that you could always just undercut them, and then you can just kinda knife the box out like that. So I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna router it. So I can now finish screwing off this sheet. And another beginner mistake that people make all the time is on these, they screw too close. So we know there's a stud right here and screwing right here would be silly. So there's these plastic tabs on these boxes and they rest on the stud right about here and right about here. And when you screw too close to this, those plastic tabs cause this drywall to blow out. So I'm only gonna go right down here. I always, always get embarrassing screws whenever I film a video. <laughs> you know, part of the reason is it takes so much time, energy, and attention to film a video that you're not paying proper attention to the physical aspect of doing the job. So it makes it way easier to get little mistakes. Oh, would you look at this? These bricks stick out right here. Um, well, I know an easy solution to that. All right, we've got another beginner mistake and that is screws set too deep. So that's too deep. Too deep. And my drill just needs a click outwards and it should be just right. I'm gonna leave those ones, but I'm gonna put another one in right here. That's better. All right, you guys, so your screws shouldn't stick out at all. You can use a putty knife to test. 
So that one's borderline. It's actually not clicking. It would cover, but I would still like it to actually be just a little bit further in. And this one, very obviously. If any of your screws click, give that a quarter turn. Even that, if you can even hear just that. It's too much. It needs to go in and you need to adjust your drill. Perfect. Those will cover. So that's a total beginner mistake, is screws either too far in or too far out. When they're too far in, they tear the paper, and when the paper is torn, it has no holding power. It's just gonna turn into a screw pop because the board can move. Drywall's crumbly. In fact, it's a terrible product. I don't, I don't even really like it. It's just, it's what we use because it's fast and cheap. That's our, uh, that's our motto in North America, fast and cheap. Eh. Not just North America. That's like the new economy, I suppose. Oh yeah. Let's see. One, two, three. Darn, forgot I had this set wrong. There we go. Okay, let's see how it's set now. How do I always embarrass myself with the drill? Like, and the screws, there's three on the floor. I'm out of practice, I actually haven't hung any board for a good couple of months. All right, you guys, this brings me to another mistake that people make all the time, screw spacing. Way too many or not enough screws. And I would say more often than not, I see people putting not enough screws in. So over from top to bottom, there might be like four screws or like two screws. I've seen that a lot. So here's the thing that's a little bit confusing. Depending on where you live, it can vary as to how much screws they want. So here in Canada on the West Coast, they're not actually that fussy. So what we usually do is three screws in the center of a four foot board which turns into about every 16 inches for walls. On ceilings, it's a foot apart. And around the perimeter, it goes down to a foot as well. So on this perimeter, I should be putting them roughly every 12 inches. That was the closest I should put it to an outlet. So you don't need to go every eight inches. I mean, you're gonna have to fill each and every one of those screws. So I say, you know, about every 12 inches is a pretty safe bet, no matter where you are. Okay, you guys, I'm running out of time and daylight right now, but there's still definitely some more things I can tell you. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go and have my weekend. Maybe I'll shave, maybe I won't, but we'll get back to this in a little bit, which is only, you know, 10 seconds for you guys. But for me, it's like three days. <laughs>